Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernard from the BTN HD. And today, guys, I'm going to show you how to run Hyper-V Manager within a virtual environment. So uh, I've been configuring a Hyper-V uh, server for one of my clients. And for me to keep up on the game and uh, refreshing myself, I need to build the same environment at my house. But I just don't have another hardware or another physical server to build this. So the best thing is to virtualize it. So right now I have uh, VMware, as you can see, I got VMware, and I have a Windows Server 2012 R2 data center because data center, uh, ver the data center version for Windows 12 actually gives you unlimited access or unlimited um, capabilities to create virtual machines. If you're using Windows Server 2012 standard, I think you, you're only able to create two virtual machines, right? So uh, I have this virtual machine and I want to install Hyper-V. So if we go to manage, we go to add roles and features and we click on next, click on next, click on next again and let's pick Hyper-V. Click on all the add features and what happens? Hyper-V cannot be installed. Hypervisor is already running. Now this is a common problem. You cannot run a hypervisor on top of another hypervisor. So what's going on? So you're probably saying, okay, my 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 processor does support Hyper-V. So why or you know it does have VT enabled and all that stuff. So what's going on? I'm going to show you guys how to fix this. So I'm going to press OK. I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to close this up, and I'm going to shut down my machine. So I am actually so I'm actually going to do a Control Delete. And uh, let's shut it down. Let's shut it down. There you go. Let's shut it down. Click any option. Let's, let's just shut this down real quick. So once the machine is completely shut down, what you need to do is you need to get into your VMX file, I believe, the VMX file. Yeah. And we need to do some modifications in it. So I'm going to minimize this, and I'm actually going to go inside the roots where all my virtual machines live. And this is Hyper-V right here. Now, the one that you need to modify is the one that's called uh, whatever name your virtual machine is called. Mine is BJ Hyper-V dot VMX. So the VMX is the one that you need to do. You're going to right click and you need to edit. You can open it with um, Notepad or I'm going to open. I'm going to actually edit it with Notepad plus plus and it's going to open it up and it, you see all this awesome attributes and parameters that make this virtual machine run now there's three of them that i like to use and i'm going to show i'm going to tell you why and which ones they are so the first one i like to use is the hyper uh visor dot cpu id dot v0 and you want to assign that to false okay now the hypervisor dot cpu id dot v0 is uh, this option tricks the windows server 2012 into thinking that is not running a virtualized instance okay the next one i like to use is mce enable and that's going to be assigned to true remember all caps and the mce dot enable this option enables the machine check exception which is the mce which enables Windows Server 2012 VM to report CPU hardware issues. That's always a good thing to have. And the last one I like to add inside the VMX file is uh, VHV enabled and assign it to a true value. Okay. So the VHV dot enable, uh, this option actually allows you or enables nested virtualization. Once you add those three attributes inside your VMX, uh, file you want to save it you want to close it and um, close this up and let's go back into my hyper-v and one last thing you need to go and edit your virtual machine settings you need to go into the processor and make sure you have virtualized intel vt or ept or amd v enabled if you want you could do the virtualized cpu performance counters and also make sure that your host where you actually have your VM workstation installed, the virtu the CPU does support uh, VT, and you got to go inside the BIOS and make sure you enable that. So we're going to press OK on that, and we're going to power it on. 
And once it's powered on, we are going to log in. And we're going to try it one more time and see what happens. Okay, so it's finally here at the login screen. So I'm going to send a control alt delete command and I'm going to log in into this machine. Now this machine is an Active Directory. I don't recommend you installing Hyper-V within an Active Directory. Uh, but again, I don't have a lot of hardware or physical machines to actually have like multiple stuff. So I'm um, logging in. Once it logs in, it's going to automatically launch the server manager. Okay, so our server manager uh, console is up and running. Uh, we're going to click on manage and I'm going to add roles and features. We're going to click on next and next again and next again. And let's click on a Hyper-V. Again, you're going to get this nice little dialog box that it needs additional required features. You're going to click on Add Features. And if everything goes well, you shouldn't get that, di you shouldn't get that dialog box at all, uh, indicating that there is another hypervisor running. We're going to click on Next, click on Next, click on Next, and um, you know, give your Ethernet and click Next. If you're doing any migrations, you're going to allow it. I'll go for it. Click Next. Default location. Uh, again, if you're doing this, I kind of recommend if you're doing it on, on a partition, not on your primary uh, partition. I'm gonna click. I'm gonna leave everything as default for now. Click next, and we're gonna install. And that's it, guys. It's installing. Uh, now you're able to create virtual machines on the fly within a virtual machine. So you're creating a. You just created a Hyper-V virtual machine, and then inside that virtual machine, you install the Hyper-V manager. It's wild. It's crazy. It makes life a. It makes life a lot easier, especially if you're testing stuff out on the fly, and you want to make sure stuff is working before you put it into the production world. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or concerns, leave them at the bottom of the comment section. Don't forget about hitting that like button because it does support this guy as well as the video and i catch you guys on the next one peace out